All right, here we go. You know how fast quantity's value is changing at every moment? You want to know how much of the quantity you have at every moment. So here's a similar setup to what we've been talking about. And I, I, pause, I pause life here. So x is increasing through delta x intervals. I'm going to pause life at x. The current value of x is 6.75. And what I want to know is, so how much do we have at x equals 6.75 based on the approximate rate function? Okay, how much do we have at x equals uh, 6.75 based on the approximate rate function? In order to do that, in order to figure out how much we have at x equals 6.75, what's going to be the general strategy? Just as a, a, the general strategy, let's see, is, where's William Clark? All right, William. Can you just... In, in the broadest sense, what will be the general strategy to try to figure out how much we have at x equals 6.75? First thing we have to do is apply the time of 6.75 Okay. into R sub F. Okay. To find out the constant rate change. That rate, okay. And then once we have that rate change, we can plug it in to the uh, accumulation. Okay, but so we're but we're trying to build the amount of accumulation at six point seven five. So what is it going to take to build up? So we don't have an accumulation function. That we're trying to build that. So I'm just we're going to start by just getting this amount of accumulation at six point seven five. What will be the general strategy that we worked on Thursday? What's that? Look at the y value. The y value of one of these functions. What do the y values of these functions give? Rate of change. These are both rate of change functions. We're trying to build accumulation. So, well, it's here. To get a general, a general sense of how we're going to build the amount of accumulation at 6.75. <coughs> I believe you would take the uh, approximate rate of change function and calculate the approximate rate of change for each one of those chunks. Okay. And uh, using that, approximate the accumulation for that chunk. And add it to every single chunk. Add every chunk together, and get the approximation. Okay, he's onto it, right? So for each interval, we're going to take the constant rate and using the constant rate, find out how much change. And how much change do we get in each interval? If we're going to use what principle we're going to use to get a the little bit of change for each interval. <laughs> dy equals mdx. Our constant rate comes from the approximate rate function. That's the f part. Dx is whatever whatever width we have. So in the completed intervals, the width is delta x. In the current interval, the change in x is dx. Okay, so what does this look like? It looks like m times a change in x plus m times a change in x plus m times a change in x plus m times a change in x. That's how we're going to get the amount of accumulation at 6.75. And we're going to add all those up. Okay, so we're going to get all the change from the completed intervals. In this case, there are three. For x equals 6.75, there are three completed intervals. And then we're going to get the change from the current interval. And there's only one of those. And that's going to, instead of, instead of uh, delta x, the width of a moment, it's going to be, what, a shorter a change, a smaller change in x, uh, according to dx, right? It's going to be dx. Okay, so that first rate, the first rate is going to be, so, so uh, I don't know if we've said yet, but this value x equals a, x equals a, you can see there's a uh, light gray question mark there. That's our, the x value for which we're going to start accumulating. All right, so this x equals a is the, is the value of x for which we're going to start accumulating. In this case, it's about 2.1, something around 2.1. We've decided we're going to start accumulating at x equals 2.1. We call that value a. Okay. So then do you see that the, the first constant rate for the first interval will be r of a? Do you see that? We'll plug in that x value at the left side. We're going to plug in that x value at the left side, and that's going to give you this this, this rate, and we'll make that the constant rate for the whole interval, and we'll multiply by the, that by delta x, and we get that amount of change for the first interval. Make sense? 
So now I want you to tell me what, <coughs> what using using variables, using variables, what are we going to plug in to get the the rate for the second interval and the rate for the third interval? So what do we plug in? What x values do we plug in to get the rate for the second interval and the third interval using variables and expressions? So if we plug in a to get that rate of change for the first, what are we going to plug in to get the rate for the second. Where is Baolong? Baolong? Last name Yan. Last name Yan. Not here? Oh, that's it. So what will we plug in into the rate function here to get this second constant rate? It'll be this one up here. Okay, so what is it? 1.3? Okay, where's Shang He Meng? Shang He Meng. Last name Meng. How about Eric? Eric B. Eric Beshian? All right, Madison. Halverson. Madison. Any idea? What should we plug in to the rate to into the rate function to get this second constant rate? Two a. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Is it two a? Is it if this from here to here is a? Is this two a? She's got the right idea. Instead, it should be a what plus delta x. Is that a question? What are you gonna you gonna say? What are we gonna say? Yeah, so do you see that it's a plus delta x gets you to that x value right there? And so then what about for the third interval? What will we plug into the rate function? What's that? X value. A plus 2 delta x. And then what about for the current interval? So a plus delta x, a plus 2 delta x. For the current interval, it'll be a plus 3 delta x. Question? <laughs> but each each moment has a different constant rate associated with it, so we have to break them up. See, the first moment. No, I know. I mean that. Okay. Uh, but you're saying like multiply, like like multiply the first interval between the intervals. Yep. No, delta x is the strictly the width of a moment. It's always going to be the width of the moment that we choose. So yes, that whole the whole interval for completed intervals is a change in x, but we're not. It's not delta x. <laughs> delta x is only the width of a moment, and nothing else. So it's like changing like one delta x minus two minus three. So so to get to there, it's a. Then to get to the next start of the next interval, we're going to add delta x. Then to get to the start of the next interval, we're going to add another delta x. Okay. And then to get to the start of the current interval, in this scenario, we would add three delta x's to a. Okay, And then that gives us the rate, and then we know that we take the rate, the constant rate, times the change in x to get the little change um, for each interval. Other questions? Yep. So is delta x, is that like the yeah. It has nothing to do with an asymptote. It's just a, a change in x. It's the width of a moment. Nothing to do with an asymptote. Other questions? Okay. So you learned about summation notation. So notice these completed intervals. It's the same thing over and over again. It's always r times delta x plus r times delta x. The only difference is what we plug into the r, which, which x value we want. So we're going to, so rather than, you know, it, when we actually build a, the accumulation function, we'll have many, many completed intervals. We don't want to have to write them all out. So we want one notation that means all the completed intervals sum together. The, the change of each completed interval, all that change, all those changes sum together. That's where the summation notation comes in. So this is Greek sigma for sum. We're going to sum up a bunch of r times delta x's. 
R times delta x, R times delta x, R times delta x. So the only thing that changes then is what we're putting into the R function to get the constant rate. Question? Yes, because this is just the completed intervals. And what, why is that the, the current interval is different? Because it's a smaller change in x. It hasn't reached a full completed interval yet. So we're going to group all the completed intervals together because it's always times delta x. But then the last one's times dx. We don't want to include that. Another question? Why is it going all the way up to 3 if it's not included? What now? Over here? Yeah. No, this is just an index saying, so 1 refers to the first interval. 2 refers to the second interval. This is the third interval. So yeah, so this, is, this here is the first interval, and then the second interval, and the third interval. But you're on to it. Where we're, we're going next, you're on to it, okay? So we need a formula using j. So j starts at 1. That gives us the first interval. Then j becomes 2. That gives us the second interval. Then j becomes 3, and it gives us the third interval. And that notation tells us to add those three together. Add those three together. So we need a formula in terms of j, so we have the right rate in the right interval. So given a value of j, we need to get the right, correct rate. So let's do that. So the interval number, uh, when j is 1, that's that first interval. When j is 2, that's that second interval. When j is 3... That's the third interval. So then the question is, what's the x value for the rate in the jth interval? So what is the x value? So if j is 1, you're looking at that. When j is 2, you're looking at this. And when j is 3, you're looking at this. Given a j value, what do you plug in to the rate function to get the correct Constant rate for that interval. See if you can figure it out with the person next to you. What's going to be the formula using J that we're going to put in there? Okay, where's Tay? Tay Whitehair. Where's Tay? My pre-calc student. Okay, make note. Alejandro, Ruiz, Alejandro. Okay, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but you got to come to class. Uh, Whitney Eba. Whitney, did you come up with a formula that given the jth interval, it tells us what x value to put in the rate? So what's the pattern here? We always have what? What's your... there, there's always what? <clears throat> so there's always an A, and then always an increase of some number of delta X's. How many delta X's do we increase by in the jth interval? This is J. This is the first. This is the first interval. J is one. This is the second interval. J is two. How many delta x's do we add? Yes, sir. Yeah, you got. You're thinking the right thing, but you you have the math wrong. Okay. So are we adding? Here's the J. The second interval. Are we adding two delta x's in this interval? Okay, are we adding three delta x's in this interval? 
So what will it be? A plus J minus 1 delta X's. So if you didn't see it before, do you see it now? There's always the A. We're going to add 1 less delta X than the interval number. We're going to add 1 less delta X than what interval it is. Why? Because we're going to the left side of the interval. You don't include, you're not going to include the delta X of the current interval. You just want all the delta X's from previous intervals, so that's one less than the current interval. Question? Because we want J to be the interval number. We want this to be the number of the interval. So we're going to start with the first interval. And in the first interval, we don't add any delta X's. We just have A. So it's one less. And then, in, and then the second interval, to get to the left side of the second interval, we only have to go across one interval. So that's 1 less than 2 is 2 minus 1. To get to the left side of the third interval, we only need to traverse three, two intervals. So 1 less than j. So we're going to always go a plus 1 less than j number of delta x's. Question? Because we want j to be the interval number. We want j to be the interval number. We don't want to have a zeroth interval. The first interval is the first interval, 1. And then the second interval is 2. So we don't want a zeroth interval. We want j, we want j to be the interval number. Which interval are we talking about? So that's why we do that. That makes sense. But yes, that would work. Mathematically, it would work. Okay, so we're going to put that in there. And so this is what we get. So when you look at the summation notation, you have to still see that all it's doing is doing m times a change in x plus m times a change in x plus m times a change in x. This is a secondary, that we just worked out, this is a secondary formula. Don't let that freak you out because it's making things complicated. It's secondary. You have to see this as m times change in x plus m times change in x. We're just summing up changes in y. We're just summing up changes in y. And this is just kind of the detail that gets us the right rate of change. Gets us to the right x value, to the right constant rate for the particular interval. So see the big, make sure you always see the big picture. Don't let, don't let that, that argument of R, what's going into R, uh, throw you off. It's important, but it's secondary to the, the big picture. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the picture, let me go back to the picture. So let, does it, let me see if the picture comes back up here. So look, here is the first interval. We want this x value. How many delta x's from A do we go across to get that x value? How many delta x's do we go across? Let's start with the third. Start with the third. For the third interval, we want that x value to get that rate of change to be the constant rate for that interval. How many delta x's do we go across to get to that left side of the third interval? One, two. Here's the second interval. How many delta x's do we go across from A to get to the left side of the second interval? Just one. So it's always, you're always, to get to the left side, you always go one less delta x than the interval number. So when you're at the first one, you don't go across any, right? There's, you don't go any zero, you just have a. a plus zero delta x. Then you go one, so the second interval, a plus one delta x. Third interval, a plus two delta x. Is it better? Okay. So, so we got the formula, so we pretty much have the formula to sum up the total amount of change for the completed intervals. We use summation notation to represent m times a change in x, plus m times a change in x, plus however many intervals we need. So now we want to talk about the change from the current interval. So the change from the current interval requires <coughs> this, that 3. How many completed intervals to reach the current interval? No question. I mean, it's how many, it's what, this is the last value of j. So this means j starts at, we let j equals 1, and we calculate this. 
And then we let j equal 2, and we calculate this. And then we keep going, and this is the last value of j we'll do. So we'll let j equal 3, and we'll, that'll be the last time we do it. Is that better? Okay. All right, so for the current interval, we have a plus 3 delta x. And so the question is, how many completed intervals to reach the current interval? How many completed intervals to reach the current interval? It's 3. And relative to our completed intervals, how many is that? It's all of them, right? It's all of them. So we're, gonna, we're just going to, to get to the left side of the current interval, we're just going to do a plus the total number of completed intervals. And that will take us to the left side of the current interval. Does it make sense? It's just however many complete intervals you have times delta x plus a will get you to the left side of the current interval. So for the current x interval, so the formula that goes into that is a plus that the total number of completed intervals delta x. In this case, it was 3. All the completed intervals, that many delta x's plus a get you to the left side of the current interval. Okay, this is a very important point for us, so it's, it has its own function. It's called left x. This thing right here, a plus the total number of completed intervals times delta x is what we call left x. Okay, and so we want r of left x gives us the constant rate for the current interval. r of left x is the constant rate for the current interval. And that adds a new tool to our diagram. Okay? Left x is the left side of the current interval only. We already talked about the left sides of the completed intervals. That's over here. This, these are not left x. Left x is only the left side, the x value at the left side of the current interval. So we will always add all the completed intervals plus a to get left x. a plus total number of completed intervals delta x is left x. So to get this, fun to get this function left x, what we need is, sorry, this is what we need then. How do we figure out the total number of completed intervals? So it's easy when you stop it and you say x equals 6.75 and then you can just count. But x is continually increasing through intervals. So we need to know at any given, for any given value of x, how many completed intervals have, do we have? All right, so we need that completed number, total number of completed intervals as a function of x. It's not, we can't pause it for every x and count. All right, we need, a, we need some mathematical formula. So this is our next little endeavor here. How do we get the total number of completed intervals? So that's the next question. Ready? Here we go. So here's an example. I have the starting value of accumulation at 0.87. That's A. I'm showing it down there. I have delta X of 0.62. That's our width of a moment. Okay? And then the current value of X is 9.2075. So X is 9.2075. Like I said, A is starting value 0 0.87. And our width of a moment is 0 0.62. And the question is, how many completed intervals? How many completed intervals from A to the current value of X? How many completed intervals? Talk with the person next to you. Go.
Okay, where is Hyun Nam? Hyun Nam, where are you? Okay, make sure you speak up. Mackenzie McLeffin. McLeffin. No Mackenzie? Okay, Hong Ru Zhang. Hong Ru Zhang. Okay, so did you come up with how many completed intervals there are? Oh, okay, first question. Okay, just a little bit. Okay. You're okay. Go. How many, Hyun? How many uh, completed intervals did you come up with from A to the current value of X? What's that? How'd you get 14? You counted. <laughs> okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, and then the 14th is the current. So how many completed intervals? 13. 13. Okay? Did you come up with something a little more mathematical than I counted? Hyun, is it just you just counted? That was all you did? Okay. How about, is Mackenzie here? Hung Rui Zhang? Hung Rui? Pierre Torres. Pierre, yes, did you, did you do something other than count? No, okay. Hey, one more, Rachel Erickson. Is Rachel, did you come up with anything besides counting? Just going across and counting, okay. So a volunteer, something other than counting, oh, mathematical, oh, look at all these volunteers. I'll just try you right here, what's your name? Was it? Liam. Liam. So, uh, you mean X? Okay, so what is, so you, so you first started and you said X minus A. So 9.2075 minus A. So what does that, just that much of it represent? What are you doing right there when you do X minus A? What is that? What's it? Change in X from A all the way to X. So it's this whole change in X from A to X. And then you did what? And you divided by delta x. And what did that do? What was the purpose of that? Yeah, okay. So we're asking how many 0.62s would fit into that change in x. And we're asking that's basically how many intervals there are, right? You're saying how many 0.62s would make up that change in x. So when you do that calculation, what do you get? Nine point two zero seven five minus point eight seven all over point six two and you get thirteen point four four eight. And so I thought you said there were thirteen completed intervals. <laughs> So if we want the completed intervals, what 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 does the point four four eight mean? Yeah, that's like the fraction of the current interval, also, right? Because we took x minus a. So if we wanted the current interval or the completed intervals, what do we want to do? We just want to what? Just just forget about it, right? Forget about it. Okay. What if it were thirteen point nine five? Is it fourteen completed intervals or thirteen? Still thirteen. So it's not rounding. It's not rounding. We're not rounding to the nearest. We're taking the, the greatest integer less than that number. That will be the number of complete intervals. Question? Would be a truncating? It's truncating. That's right. We're truncating off all the decimal to get just the completed. So you guys practice on one more here. So I don't recommend you counting on this. So I'll do uh, A equals, say, 1.87 and delta X of... 0.12, and the current value of x is 11.435. How many completed intervals between 1.87 and 11.435? Go. How many completed intervals between 1.87 and 11.435?
N is the same as X. N is the same as the current value of X. Yes, thank you. All right, where's Desiree Reinhardt? Desiree, did you get it? Tell me what you did. Okay, shh, hold on a sec. Desiree. 11.435. Okay, the total change from A to X, then? All over 0.12. And what did you get? Did you have the decimal version of that? How many completed intervals from A to X, Desiree? How many completed intervals, though? 79. 79 completed intervals. Does it make sense? Anybody have a question? Okay, so we have a mathematical device that does this truncating for us. It takes, a, it takes the greatest whole number less than the one we want. That's, what, that's In this case, that's what we need. We need the greatest whole number less than whatever we get. And that's called the, that's called the floor function. The floor function takes whatever number you put into it and gives you the greatest whole number less than the number you put in. That's what we want, right? to get the completed intervals. So if I go in here, so let's just confirm what she said. She, she said 11.435 minus 1.87. Come back. Uh, Haste makes waste. Minus one seven. Okay, so there's the seventy nine point seven. So we know there's seventy nine completed intervals. So if you type in F L O O R, you get these brackets. Just type in floor. That's this is the function that we want. It's like uh, Vertical bars with the little floors on the bottom. So I'm going to take that value right there. I'm going to take that expression. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it into the floor function. It worked. All right. So I know something's, something's not responding with my, for some reason right now. But anyway, so here it's showing you that if you put in that ratio, that we know is 79.7, and then execute the floor function on that ratio, it returns the whole number that we want, 79. So now I want you to write a general formula for the, the completed number of intervals. Whole complete intervals, go. Write the general formula for completed intervals from A to X with a moment width of delta X. Write the formula, go. So for any A, for any X, for any delta X, what's the completed intervals from A to X? That's what you're writing down. Okay, where's Christopher Heston? Christopher Heston, is Christopher here? Okay, did you get it? 
Did you get a formula now? If this, if it's, if our example was 11.435 minus 1.87 over 0.12 floor, how could you just turn that into a general formula? He wants the floor of x minus a over delta x. Yeah. What do we think? That's right. Okay, he got it. That is the number of completed intervals from a to x. Take x minus, take the whole distance, divide by the each interval width, and then truncate, lop off the 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 uh, decimal. We don't want that current interval. We don't want the portion of the current interval. We just want the whole number of completed intervals. That's what the floor does. So that is our whole number of completed intervals, and we just finished our um, writing the, what the definition of the function left is. Going back now to what we were doing before. So now we know what left is. What is this function left? It is, going back to our original thing, it's going to be the value of a plus that whole plus all the completed intervals delta times delta x gives us that value left x. So instead of we know how to do this mathematically now, the total number of completed intervals is the floor of x minus a over delta x. Now, very important aspect of left of x. What's the what do you put into left of x? What kind of what kind of thing do you put into left of x? What kind of value? X value, right? Independent variable. What kind of value comes out of left of x? A rate of change? What kind of value comes out of left of x when you put an x value in? So I'm going to put in 6.75. And what came, when I put 6, if I do left of 6.75, what will that be? What kind of value will that be? No, that's just this part of it. Left is this what? X value at the beginning of the current interval. So it, in this case it is? 6. What kind of number is 6? Is it a rate of change? No, what kind of number is it? What kind of variable value is it? X. X. It's another X value. This is huge. Students get totally confused about left of X. Listen to me now. It doesn't give you a rate of change. It doesn't give you a rate of change. It gives you another X value. The X value at the beginning of the current interval. Hear, hear me now, okay? Left of 6.75 in this case is 6. It's not some rate of change up here. It's another x value. It's the x value at the beginning of the current interval, or the left side of the current interval. Does it make sense? Okay, we got everything we need to write this bad boy in one line. Here we go. So now, how much do we have at any current value of x? In, in other words, what is the approximate accumulation function, which we'll call a of x? a of x. So what's the general structure of A of X? Just the, the general structure. Where's Philip? Can you tell me just the general structure, the biggest picture of A of X? How are we going to get a total amount of accumulation at X? Okay, bigger picture than that. It's bigger picture than that. Just the just the very just the general idea of how we're going to calculate the total accumulation up to x. Okay, but for what? So big picture, big picture, yeah. Change in y. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're going to sum up all the changes of y for the completed intervals. Accumulation due to the completed intervals, and what was that? That was this thing, and we did our shorthand notation with the sum. So that we worked on that. So we're going to sum up all the accumulation due to the completed intervals, and then we've got a little bit more. And a little bit more is the accumulation due to the current interval. Accumulation so far in the current interval. And that is our 
the rate, the constant rate taken from left of x times dx. Okay, so there's only two things left. There's only two things remaining. The first thing is how many completed intervals. So when we do the summation, j goes from 1 to what? So j goes from 1 to the total number of completed intervals. Who's paying attention? Is Jared. Jared's Sue. Yeah, I told you. You could get asked twice in the same, same lecture. So how many completed intervals are there from a to x? How many completed intervals from A to X? We've done a lot today, so just forgot. Joseph Holland. I'm Joseph Holland. Oh, right. <laughs> He's ready. What's, but any, no, this is for any A and any X and any delta X. How many completed intervals do we have for any a, any x, and any delta x? Just look in your notes. We just did it. Who's next? Where's Bing Kong Wang? Bing Kong, Bing Kong Wang. Oh, we're gonna go back to back to Joseph. It's the function of x minus a over delta x. Right. Right. Joseph, you're loved. Okay, awesome. And then the next thing is, we don't, we don't want to have dx. We want this to be solely a function of x. A is a function of x. So we need to rewrite dx in terms of x. And so I want you to put your, put your attention down here. You can, you can figure it out right here. What is the value of dx in terms of x. Figure it out. Go. What's the value of dx in terms of x? It's all right here for you. So how would you rewrite that distance dx using the variable x? Go. Where's Jackson? Jackson Merton. Where's Jackson? Did you get it? What would you? How would you express dx in terms of x? No idea. No idea. So it's a change in x. How do we calculate a change in x? How do we calculate a change in x? How about Philip again? We, so I want to write this dx in terms of x. So we're going to think of that as a change in x. How can I calculate that change in x, dx? Mm, almost. Lots of hands going up here. Yes. He wants f to x minus left x. What were you going to say? But the change is the difference, right? The change is x final minus x initial. That's okay. X my, he got it. X minus left of x. X minus left of x is exactly the value of dx. The current value of x, which is the final value of x, minus. Okay, don't, so you guys, don't just talk. Hold on. Don't just talk. Do you see that? x minus left x, final value of x minus initial, is the same as dx. Do you see that? And that's what allows us to make this truly a function of x and not dx. So we got it. Okay. So what is this? This is a one-line version, one-line version of the approximate accumulation function, like the one you did in several lines for the Rocket Basketball for homework. Now this does it in one line. This does it in one line.
So we've got to think. X is increasing through intervals. X is increasing through intervals. There's always, for any current value of X, there's some completed intervals. This calculates all the accumulation for those completed intervals. And then at any given value of X, it's in some current interval. This is the little bit more accumulation in that current interval. Okay? All right. So as we went along the way, my feeling was probably most of you were understanding things as we went. Okay? But this is going to fall out of your brain quick. You've got to watch this video tonight and maybe again in a couple days to keep reviewing this because there's a, we did a lot of heavy duty math and you've got to know all that stuff that we did so don't just because you feel pretty confident right now doesn't mean in 24 hours you'll have it listen shh, shh. please heed my warning you have to review this and this is you know like I said we've done a lot of hard work to do this and you've got to retain it it's all all the details of this are going to be tested on our exam a week from Thursday night. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'll I will open up the the uh, the top hat questions that I was going to give you now, and I'll just leave them open until Thursday, and you can work on them. Okay.